Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Julie Fletchman. I'm the president and CEO of the Pancreatic Cancer Action Network, fondly known as PANCAN, and I'm so thrilled to be with all of you today. Before we get started, I just want to acknowledge that I've been going to D.C. every year for our annual Advocacy Day event since 2006 when we hosted it for the very first time. And I have to say, I really miss being there in person with all of you. I miss your hugs. I miss being with our PanCan family. However, the upside to all of this is by doing this virtually, there are so many more people that are able to join with us today and all week long. So welcome to PanCan's first ever virtual advocacy action week and welcome to everyone who is joining us for the very first time. I'm also thrilled that we're being joined today by some very special guests. Senator Sheldon Whitehouse from Rhode Island, Dr. Anabon Mitra, a professor of pathology and a pancreatic cancer researcher, Andy Bucharest, a pancreatic cancer survivor and longtime PanCan volunteer, and Logan Wood, one of our junior advocates. I do hope that all of our attendees today are staying safe and doing well during what I know are very challenging times for everyone. But despite what is going on in our world today, pancreatic cancer does not stop or slow down. Every day, people across the country and around the world are being diagnosed with this disease. And defeating pancreatic cancer remains our urgent mission. So why is taking action with Congress important this week? Because pancreatic cancer is the third leading cause of cancer-related death in the United States, and it's expected to become the second leading cause of cancer death in the next few years. The five-year survival rate is just 10%. There's no early detection test. 
and new treatment options are desperately needed for patients. PANCAN has been at the forefront of demanding increased federal research dollars for pancreatic cancer, and our success is only possible because of all of you and your involvement and your actions. PANCAN also leads the way in funding research and providing patient services. Let's take a quick look on your screen and see the impactful work that you helped to make possible. Back in May of 2002, I got one of those phone calls. And if you've never gotten one of those phone calls, you never want to get one of those phone calls. I will never forget when my doctor called me. She um, did not apologize. And it was a three-word sentence. The first word was you, and the last word was cancer. She said, turns out there was something wrong with you. The only information that you could find online was that it was a deadly, awful disease and that there was nothing that could be done. How can there be a disease that took my mother in six months and nobody was doing anything about it? We're thinking always constantly about the people in our life that we're fighting for so that more research can be funded and more awareness can happen. And get things done. All of these different people coming together for one reason, and that's to raise awareness. Keep the faith and we'll win. We'll get it done. Pancreatic cancer is a disease that I think we can beat, but it's going to take courage and funding. It's important to have that loud voice. We are all in this together. We can create change. We can create hope. We've been able to get bills passed in Congress. The Recalcitrant Cancer Research Act. I applaud the men and women of the Pancreatic Cancer Action Network today for their ongoing work in the fight against this disease and the development of new forms of treatment that will benefit all those whose lives are touched by cancer. Better treatment options, provide research grants. We have a grassroots network that does tremendous, incredible work. Our volunteers are the Action Network, the heart and soul of our organization. Raising awareness, raising money, all of that is critically important. We can actually do something in the face of this. I feel we're on this path that is truly going to change the course of history for this disease. That PANCAN is going to be a critical, important part of making that happen over the next 20 years. Great, thank you. So what that video would have shown you is just what a great community um, that all of you are and all of the impactful work that you do by walking in Purple Stride events, by advocating in Washington, D.C., by volunteering in your communities, you are making a difference and having an impact on patients' lives. So funding research is critical to solving pancreatic cancer. Did you know that 80% of pancreatic cancer research funding comes from the federal government? That's why every year, passionate volunteers and supporters like you go to Washington, D.C. as part of PANCAN's advocacy efforts. And thanks to advocates like you, we've been very successful at these efforts. As a result of your efforts just last year, Congress created the first ever pancreatic cancer research program through the Department of Defense with $6 million in dedicated fun funding, something we've been working on for the last several years. Senator Whitehouse will share more about this and some of our other big, big advocacy achievements. So while we can't be there in person this year, we still can play an important role in urging Congress to prioritize pancreatic cancer research. I think of nothing else, the last few weeks have shown us that when people raise their voices about something that is wrong in society, it makes people listen. And this is how change happens. So I am extremely grateful to all of you that you're willing to stand up and demand more for pancreatic cancer patients. Tomorrow, we need all of you to call your members of Congress to tell them the urgent need to increase federal funding for pancreatic cancer research. And I promise you, by the time we get off this webinar, you're going to know just how to do that. It's very easy. So one of the most powerful tools that we all have is our stories, our stories about how pancreatic cancer has impacted our lives. And like you, I also have a story to tell. My father died from pancreatic cancer in 1999. 
He was 52 years old, and he died four months after his diagnosis. He's the reason I advocate on behalf of pancreatic cancer patients for more funding for this disease. So some of you may have already filled out your card that's like mine on the slide. If you have your card and you filled it out, hold it up. Let's remember all of the powerful reasons that we gather here today. If you haven't had a chance to visit the honor wall on our website yet to share your story, please do so. We want as many stories on our website as possible. And there you can also find a downloadable card like mine um, that you can print and personalize with the name of the person that inspires you to take action. And then don't just fill out that card, but share it. Go walk in your neighborhood, share it with your neighbors, your family and friends, and tell them why you take action. You can spread the word on your social media by posting pictures of yourself and using the hashtag on the screen and tagging us at PanCan. So now I'm extremely honored and excited to introduce you to our first panelist, Senator Sheldon Whitehouse from Rhode Island. Senator Whitehouse has been a champion for pancreatic cancer and PANCAN for many years. In fact, we would not have accomplished all we have for increasing federal pancreatic cancer research efforts if it wasn't for his support and leadership in Congress. He's a member of the Senate Finance Committee and has made reforming our broken health care system a hallmark of his career. He's also a member of the White House's Bipartisan Congressional Task Force on Reopening America, working across the aisle to get Americans back to work safely. So Senator Whitehouse, we are so thrilled to have you join us today. Thank you. Um, let's maybe just start with you talking about how pancreatic cancer has impacted your life and why you're such a champion for pancreatic cancer patients and their families on Capitol Hill. Senator Whitehouse, you're muted. How about that? There you go. <laughs> there we go. Uh, pancreatic cancer took my mom. She was 55. She was beautiful and vibrant and full of life. And um, she went very quickly after the diagnosis. Um, and uh, it was kind of a stunning turn of events in, the, uh, in my family. Well, thank you. Thank you for That's sharing that story. the noise of the Capitol in the background, by the way. Those are buzzers tell, pretending to tell me what's going on on the floor. <laughs> Telling you you have to go vote. <laughs> um, so I don't think people always understand the critical role that Congress plays in funding medical research. Can you talk about Congress's role in funding medical research for diseases like pancreatic cancer? Yeah, we've, we can do a couple of things, and, and we have on pancreatic cancer. One is to uh, steer the National Institutes of Health and the National Cancer Institute particularly to look more closely at pancreatic cancer. They don't like Congress to be too directive, but we passed the Recalcitrant Cancer Act uh, about five years ago now, and that set up a scientific framework that was not overly directive, they were okay with it. And they've been doing work under that uh, Recalcitrant Cancers Act on pancreatic cancer since then. And its work period is now up, the frameworks are in place. The final report Congress demanded has now been produced. So um, that was a successful interlude and we should be thinking about what to do next uh, on that front. On a different front, the Department of Defense uh, often lets congressionally directed funding uh, provide financial support for research. It obviously began with uh, more specific military-related injuries, um, but over time it's expanded and pancreatic cancer is higher in veterans and other populations. So um, we were able, after a couple of years of trying, to get a Department of Defense funded pancreatic cancer research program up and running. So our task now is to get more money into it. That's a big hurdle of getting it established is, is accomplished. Now we just need to bump up the amount of money that we uh, appropriate to it. 
Yep. And, you know, again, just such a huge thank you from all of us um, because you've been such a champion on both of those efforts, getting the Recalcitrant Cancer Research Act passed and creating the Department of Defense's Pancreatic Cancer Research Program. So you may remember back in 2008 when we were first starting to talk about the Recalcitrant Cancer Research Act, some of your constituents from Rhode Island came in to talk to you about the bill and why this was important. Can you talk yeah. about why having your constituents come in and talk to you about this, why that really matters and why it makes a difference in the work that you do? Well, um, a couple of things. First of all, everybody in my line of work cares about what their constituents uh, think and what's going through their constituents' lives, uh, particularly in Congress where the districts can be smaller. Um, you know, you get to know a lot of people. I think um, Stephanie Abate uh, from Rhode Island is on the call, and I think Sue Washburn is also, um, and I think Marilyn Myro is also. Uh, Marilyn, I know from a lot of different uh, occasions and uh, activities around Rhode Island. Sue has been visiting and advocating for years now. She's uh, a known, uh, a very known person um, in my world. And Stephanie Abate has got a big group, almost as big as that photo you showed of her uh, Purple Stride family uh, group, her, her mother's group. So you get to engage with people and um, that makes a really big difference. And they also have really touching, you know, the bad thing about this disease is it creates really tough personal stories. And personal stories matter a lot in this building. So people going in to talk to their congressman or going in to talk to their senator should be confident that um, the office will care, uh, that you as a constituent matter, and that the personal story that you bring has power. You don't have to have a lot of money. You don't have to have big statistics or any of those things. Your personal story has power. Yep, that's great. Um, so tomorrow we're asking people to call you know, they're, they're members of Congress's offices in Washington, D.C. They probably won't actually speak to the member of Congress, but they'll speak to a staff person in those offices. Can you just, you know, why is talking to the staff in your offices also really important and key? Well, a lot of what we do, we do through staff here in Congress. Um, as busy as we are, I think our staff are often even busier. And the staff are engaged with our constituents, doing constituent service. Uh, they're engaged doing the policy work to develop these ideas and drafting uh, legislation. And um, they're chasing other offices to align um, co-sponsors and co-signers of letters. So the staff work is um, really significant. And the staff people also report very thoroughly uh, to members of Congress, who came in and why. And it's obviously been particularly important because we've been deprived of the in-person meetings that are the staple of our time here uh, in Congress. And so the staff calls that get passed through to us are, I think, more important than ever. Great. And I'm sure volume, the number of calls you get on a particular topic um, certainly matters as you think about your priorities. Yeah, that and the power of the story. Don't ever underestimate that. Yeah, no, I think that's great advice. People think they have to be experts in pancreatic cancer, but it's really more about, about their personal story. Yeah, and I think it's helpful to be optimistic, too, that this is a really, really tough disease, but that we have made progress, that we're going to make more progress, and that um, the help of your senator, the help of your congressman, to help you realize that dream of, of making progress uh, to come out of something that's probably been a tragedy. Um, that's very touching and, and very significant. Yep. Well, thank you, Senator Whitehouse. Um, I know this is an incredibly busy time for you in Washington, D.C. There's certainly a lot going on um, in our country, and we're grateful to you for the work that you do. Um, I really appreciate you being on this call with, with us today, sharing the story about your mom. Um, is there any final advice you want to give to everyone before I know you need to get back to what you're doing in D.C.? 
Just that I'm grateful to everybody who is willing to put themselves out there and participate in this advocacy. It absolutely makes a difference. It makes a really big difference, but it's not easy. Uh, I didn't feel very comfortable talking about my mom's illness for a while after she had passed. And um, even now it's still a sorrow in my life. Um, but I think what a lot of people find is that working with others, um, having that collegiality with other people who've had similar experiences and turning what is a sorrow in your life into progress and something positive and valuable um, is, a, is a help and it's a strengthener. So, um, but that doesn't mean it's easy and I appreciate it very much. So let me just close with a big thank you. Well, thank you, a big thank you back at you and you certainly created an amazing legacy um, in your mom's name in the work that you're doing in Pit for Pancreatic Cancer. So thank you on behalf of all of us for really so appreciative. Of course. Thank you, Senator Whitehouse. Good luck with all of your work that's happening right now. All right, so starting tomorrow and throughout the week, we're asking you to reach out to your members of Congress through phone calls, emails, and social media. Every day this week is important, but tomorrow is National Call Congress Day, and we just heard why your calls and the number of calls that Congress receives are really important. So we're gonna want you to call your members of Congress's office tomorrow, both your two senators and your representative, and speak directly with someone in your member's office. It's really easy, and in just a little bit, we're gonna show you exactly how to do it. So tomorrow you're gonna to make phone calls, and then for Wednesday and Thursday, we'll give you the tools to send emails to your representatives and share messages on social media. So this year, we have two asks that, we're, that we want you to talk to your members of Congress about. The first ask, you heard about this new pancreatic cancer program at the Department of Defense that was created last year with $6 million in it. We want to increase the funding for it to $10 million. And you heard Senator Whitehouse say the hardest part is creating the program. And now, you know, we'll be able to move forward and continue to increase the dollars available. So the first ask is provide $10 million for the Department of Defense's dedicated pancreatic cancer research program. The second ask is to support $44.7 billion for the National Institutes of Health and $6.9 billion for the National Cancer Institute. Senator Whitehouse mentioned both of these agencies. The National Institutes of Health is a big umbrella organization that has a lot of different um, institutes under it that focus on different diseases um, in different biomedical research areas. And then the National Cancer Institute specifically focuses on cancer research. So why are these funding amounts so important? How do they help researchers all across the country? So now I'd like to introduce our next guest, Dr. Anurban Mitra, who's gonna help explain why. Dr. Anurban Mitra is a professor of pathology and translational molecular pathology at the University of Texas MD, Ander MD Anderson Cancer Center and the scientific director of the Sheikh Ahmed bin Yazid Center for Pancreatic Cancer Research. He has received several pancan research grants over the years, including one of his very first early career grants back in 2004. Dr. Mitra is a member of our Scientific and Medical Advisory Board, as well as a member of the Steering Committee for PanCAN's Precision Promise and Early Detection Initiative. So, Dr. Mitra, thank you for being with us today. Can you talk about why funding from the National Cancer Institute is so important to pancreatic cancer researchers like you? Thank you for having me, uh, Julie. Before I start, in case anybody's wondering, what is this that I'm wearing? I'm actually wearing hospital scrubs because I was, I was doing some work in the hospital. And then I, this is actually a pan can purple cape, but I'm not wearing this for myself. I'm wearing it for our advocates and survivors who, who are not able to be there on the Hill in person. I have been on the Hill in person many, many years. Um, and I, I just wanna, uh, again, reiterate, you guys are real heroes for doing what you're doing every year. 
Um, and even though it's virtual, your voice matters. And so please use this whole week um, uh, to, to please call up your senators and your representatives and, and advocate because advocacy works. That's the bottom line. The one take home message, <laughs> advocacy works. So why, why, is, why is it so important that the National um, Cancer Institute and NIH fund pancreatic cancer research well, um, it turns out that um, the vast majority of, of the money for, for pancreatic cancer research comes from the federal government, despite the fact that we have amazing organizations like PANCAN um, that, that, do re that do raise research dollars and fund initiatives like Precision Promise um, or Early Detection Initiative. Um, the, the overwhelming majority, 80% of the money still comes from the federal government. And when you, when you see um, where things were versus where we are now, you realize the, the sheer importance of, of advocacy and, and, and why we need to make sure that the National Cancer Institute, there's the graph, thank you for putting that up, Julie. Mm -hmm. um, there's a graph that I think um, really highlights where we were um, in, the early, in the late 90s, early 2000, and I, I, I started my lab in, in early 2000, um, we were under $20 million annually in terms of funding for pancreatic cancer research. Um, and thanks to advocacy efforts by PANCAN and all of you, so many of you over the years have, have really gone, um, you know, to your representatives, to your senators, and, and, and asked them to focus on, on funding this disease. You can see that graph going up. And what is very interesting here is you see that inflection point in 2013, that coincides with the Recalcitrant Cancer Research Act, which uh, Senator Whitehouse talked about being signed into law. Um, and, and, and again, two words, advocacy works. Because of that <laughs> act that happened, um, um, the NCI realized that, the Cong that Congress wanted some um, dedicated pancreatic cancer research funding to go into this disease um, and, and they came through. I have to admit that the NCI listened, um, and they came through. They have um, funded um, several large initiatives in pancreatic cancer research from uh, developing biomarkers, which is um, you know, what we're looking for, for example, for early detection of pancreatic cancer, to understanding why immunotherapy, which some of you may have heard of um, in terms of working in so many other diseases, why is it so challenging in pancreatic cancer? So they funded these large initiatives um, that would likely not have happened without that Recalcitrant Cancer Research Act. And the Recalcitrant Cancer Research Act would not have happened without the advocacy that preceded it <laughs> for all these years. Yes, great. And I love your, your slogan, advocacy works. So I think we're going to have to adopt that. So um, why? So we've talked about the National Cancer Institute. So that's where most of the cancer research funding comes right. from in this country. But why is the new Department of Defense line item for pancreatic cancer important? And how is it different? Absolutely. So, so um, for for many years, um, the Department of Defense um, has had a medical research program that is that's commercially directed and the money is appropriated to the Department of Defense. Um, and um, uh, many of the major cancers like prostate cancer, ovarian cancer, breast cancer have had dedicated research funding tracks with money that is dedicated for that cancer. Um, so pancreatic cancer was for many years, um, unfortunately, kind of an also ran in a mix of 20 different diseases, um, and you had to compete against everything from, you know, hookworm research, uh, Gulf War illness. It was like all part of this mixed bag, and you're lucky if one grant was funded uh, out of that. So, so PanCan again about I want to say three years ago decided to to really pivot into, into advocating for a dedicated pancreatic cancer research program that came through the Department of Defense. This part of money is outside the National Cancer Institute. So, so it's when you are asking, advocating for increased funding, there's the NCI part and there's the DOD or Department of Defense part, and they're totally separate, even though the end goal is to fund pancreatic cancer research. And so, so about three years ago, PANCAN said that we need to have a dedicated pancreatic cancer research track in the DOD. Um, and as with everything else, they, they immediately went into action. Um, in fact, I was part of a couple of those advocacy days. I remember those little 
um, pamphlets you print out, Julie, and you give to all the <laughs> athletes to, to hand to the staff when you're leaving. And on the back of that, it said, create a dedicated uh, DOD funding track for pancreatic cancer. Uh, and uh, I guess Congress heard, again, advocacy works. <laughs> and um, and they they ended up creating first time a, a, a dedicated pancreatic cancer research program um, now, it's a start, small start, and as uh, you said previously, it's getting to the start, that's the biggest challenge. Um, and so they initially put about $6 million into this part. Now, our goal is, can we build on that initial investment? Um, I am chairing the, the committee that decided um, you know, what the grant structure will be and what kind of grants um, we'll be funding through this. Um, and again, I can't, I can't, uh, you know, uh, under, uh, you know, under how grateful we are to all the advocates for this. But six million dollars, uh, you know, in the grand scheme of things, was jump change. We, we, we basically will be funding about three grants or so. And and and, um, sorry, unfortunately, the, this, I have this automatic light that kind of clicks off. <laughs> there we go. Um, anyway, so we'll be funding about about six million dollars, um, and and it's about three grants. So we really need to build on this now and get more money into this pot, so that so that um, so that we can build on this initial success. Great, great. Well, thank you, and thank you for being a part of um, ensuring that that grant program um, is focused on the right things for the pancreatic cancer research community. Um, so, Dr. Mitra, um, you know, I hope you wear your purple cape um, proudly. You certainly are one of our superheroes, and we couldn't be more grateful to you for the research and work that you do for patients every single day. So, thank you. Thank you for having me, Julie. All right. So everyone, as I mentioned, the majority, as we've talked about, the majority of funding for pancreatic cancer research comes from the, the federal government. But PANCAN also plays an important role in funding research. In 1999, when PANCAN was founded, there were only a handful of scientists focused on pancreatic cancer, and research funding opportunities were quite scarce. Today, thanks in large part to all of you, our donors and our supporters, there's a growing and robust pancreatic cancer scientific community that is focused on pancreatic cancer research. And this slide just gives you a snapshot of how, how we are using your dollars um, to invest in pancreatic cancer research. So cumulatively to date, PanCan has invested over $105 million in research efforts happening all across the country. And that includes research that we've, um, that we've given out through our peer-reviewed grants program, through our competitive peer-reviewed grants program, through our Know Your Tumor program, the personalized um, medicine program to allow patients to have access to testing to find out if they have special mutations in their tumor that might provide information about how best to treat them. These, these dollars also go to our patient registry, a way for us to capture information directly from patients about their experience and what's happening to them so that we can look at that in a big scale matter and look at, you know, if we look at patients and doing particular things, can we deduce or conclude that, that how we treat how we should treat patients or how what standard of care should be used or what best supportive care um, practices should be used. And then more recently, we've launched or are in the process of launching two very large scale initiatives, one called the Early Detection Initiative, which obviously is really focused on an early detection strategy for pancreatic cancer. And that initiative is launching this year. And then sort of on the other end of the spectrum, we need to diagnose the disease earlier, but we also need better treatment options. And Precision Promise is an adaptive clinical trial that will allow us to test multiple different treatment options simultaneously over a long period of time. It can keep going on and on for a long time um, to expedite new treatment options for patients. Um, we're excited about the work that PANCAN is doing, and none of it would be possible without you. And this slide just gives you a, a brief look at the number of grants, scientists, institutions that have received um, a PANCAN grant 
over the years. And again, it's exciting to see back in the day, you know, 20 years ago, there was only a handful of researchers focused in pancreatic cancer. And today that community is growing um, quite rapidly. Um, and there are a comprehensive pancreatic cancer research programs and institutions all across the country. So we do all of this, of course, um, all of this research funding in order to improve patient outcomes. But the statistics don't really tell the whole story. And I think hearing firsthand from a pancreatic cancer survivor is always in inspirational and reminds us why our efforts are so urgent. We're going to play a video of one of our survivors, Allison Perliff. Hi, my name is Allison Perliff, and I'm a 39-year-old pancreatic cancer survivor. Research saved my life. As a result of this genetic testing, I found out that I have the BRCA2 mutation. If I was otherwise healthy, this would have been upsetting, but with pancreatic cancer, it was the key to life-saving treatment. Research made all of it possible. PanCAN's research efforts have uncovered more information about targeted mutations and how to take advantage of these mutations to provide individualized, life-saving care to patients like me. In the months that followed, I was able to be the maid of honor at my best friend's wedding. I attended my youngest son's graduation from preschool and made lifelong memories on a summer vacation with my family. None of this would have been possible without efforts like yours to focus funding on pancreatic cancer research. Research saved my life. I know your advocacy made that research possible. Tomorrow, as you call your members of Congress, I hope you will think of me as well as all the survivors and their families. With additional funding for research, those calls will turn into longer lives for all survivors and eventually a cure for pancreatic cancer. What Allison was sharing is she learned through testing that she had a genetic mutation, a BRCA2 mutation, which led her to a treatment option that she wouldn't have otherwise known that she should be on. She's a 39-year pancreatic cancer survivor she has three children, and she's very grateful and believes that it's only through research. Doing this kind of testing is only something that we, we are doing more recently because of research. So thank all of you for your advocacy work and what you do every single day to make it possible for people like her to live and survive. So I'm very grateful to Allison for sharing her story and reminding us really at the end of the day, why are we advocating for more research dollars? It's so that there will be more survivors like Allison who can share their story. So as we've discussed, tomorrow is National Call Congress Day. So it's really very simple. Um, tomorrow morning, you're going to get an email in your inbox, and there's going to be a link. And if you click on that link, it's going to walk you through exactly what you need to do, and you'll be, it will tell you exactly who your senators are, who your representative is, so, and we're going to provide you with talking points um, so that when you call your member of Congress's office, the talking points, you can print them out and you'll have them right in front of you. You're going to make those three calls, again, to your two senators and your one representative, and then you're going to log your calls, um, and you finish and you submit it. And so, again, I just want to warn you that you most likely will not be talking to the member, actual member of Congress when you call tomorrow. You'll most likely talk to the, you know, person who answers, a staff member who answers the phone. Um, but they log all of the phone calls that come in during the day, and they take notes, and then they give that to the member of Congress. And so our hope is by the end of the day tomorrow, there will be a lot high volume of calls that will have come in with the same messages to ask about the funding for the Department of Defense, pancreatic cancer program, and funding for the National Institutes of Health and National Cancer Institute. And again, as Senator Whitehouse um, you know, explained, your story is really what it's all about. You don't have to know all the facts. You don't have to be nervous. Just tell your story. You'll have a script in front of you um, and the volume of people. So if you do it and then you can get your neighbor to do it and you can get your family member to do it and you can get your friend to do it, rather than just one phone call, that's four phone calls. Um, and that volume really does make a, make a difference. So I promise it's easy. Um, and you'll get that email tomorrow telling you exactly what to do. So let's hear from two more special guests with us today. 
First, Angie B Bicarest, who's a 23-year pancreatic cancer survivor. She's also a longtime volunteer. She's from San Diego and a member of our Volunteer Advisory Council. Angie, you come to Advocacy Day every year. What is your most memorable meeting with a member of Congress, and why is volunteering for PanCan so important to you? Well, first off, Julie, thank you so much for having me here. You know, when I was diagnosed 23 years ago and facing my mortality, um, that was the toughest thing that I'd ever had to go through. So I was 32 at the time and just starting uh, my family and never expected to hear, you know, you have pancreatic cancer. Um, and I wasn't going to let that beat me. So um, I was compelled to take my adversity and turn it into something good. So I made it my personal mission to use my story and my voice to help others and to make sure that one day, you know, they're going to be, a, uh, that long-term survivorship is going to be the norm. And, you know, Advocacy Day is one of my most favorite ways to do this and my most favorite parts about PanCan. You know, it's so powerful and magical. It's seeing nearly 800 of us descending on Capitol Hill in that sea of purple and then walking through the halls with a purpose, you know, like we own the hill and feeling this great sense of empowerment. You know, to be part of hundreds of people from across the country sharing our individual stories, but coming together with one voice. And then we leave D.C. with this real sense of unity as a family that just fulfilled our purpose. You know, it's, it's the people and it's the passion for ending this disease that really makes advocacy so powerful. And I want to honor and remember two of my friends who passed away shortly after Advocacy Day last year, and they were two heroes of mine. So I don't know if you guys can see this, but um, it, this is uh, David and Rich. Both were very ill uh, in wheelchairs and oxygen, and both very adamant about being in D.C. to raise their voices for the last time. And that really humbled me greatly because, you know, D.C. weather can be tougher for anybody in June. So I want to tell you a quick story uh, about something that I remember about Rich last year. So as you guys know, you know, meeting, our meeting schedules on advocacy is very, really very busy. And as I was making my way to get to my next meeting, I run into Rich and his daughter, Michelle, and Michelle's clearly not happy with her dad at that moment. So I stop and I, I find out, well, you know, do they need help? What's going on? You know, I see Rich struggling but determined to stand up. And, you know, as he stands up, he straightens out his purple sport coat, and then he proceeds to walk through the door to meet his congressman because he wants to shake his hand and look him in the eye when he tells him why it's so important to help end this disease. You know, it was so important for him, and this is why Rich was my hero. Um, so I guarantee you that that congressman signed all the support letters that we asked and voted for the dedicated research program with the DOD. You know, and of course, we were all so thrilled to hear that our efforts worked last year when we got that uh, dedicated research program. Um, I'm sad that we won't be in D.C. advocating this year, but you know what? We can turn this adversity into something positive, and I'm excited to see the power of digital advocacy and the many more voices, you know, that, that will be and can be heard. Thank you so much, Angie, and thank you for sharing those um, special memories. Um, I know they're, they're um, heartfelt, um, they're bittersweet, um, but they do remind us so much about why we're here and why we do this work. Um, so thank you for always being an inspiration to us. We're really grateful to you. Thanks, Julie. So finally, we have one more advocate to inspire you to call Congress tomorrow, one of our most junior advocates, Logan Wood. Logan Wood is a seventh grader from Fitchburg, Massachusetts, who has attended Advocacy Day every year since 2016. So hey, Logan, it's great to have you with us today. I'm, I, I miss uh, getting my annual hug from you, but we'll do it next year, okay? We'll have to make up for this year. Yep. Um, so, Logan, I know you lost your grandpa to pancreatic cancer. Can you tell us about him and why you come every year to Washington, D.C.? Um, so, I didn't really get to know my grandpa because he died before I was born. But um, from what my mom and dad tell me, he was funny, very active, even when he had pancreatic cancer. Um, and I know if I met him, I would have a great time with him because 
he sounds like an overall great person. Oh, and that's, that's why great. I'm here. That's and so you that his his memory and the stories that you hear from your parents inspire you to want to advocate on his behalf. Yes. Yeah, that's great. So Logan, when you've gone to Washington DC, who have you met with when you've come in the past years? Um, in the past few years, I've met with Representative Joe Kennedy, um, and Senator Ed Marquis. And during those meetings, it was not like your normal meeting. It was a little bit more stressful if well, um, because you don't really know the person you're talking to. So it can be a little stressful for some people, especially if you're shy. Um, but once you get to know the person you're talking to, the more most people, well, the more I warmed up to the, um, to the pe person I was talking to. So don't be scary Sorry. when you call a Congress member or email them. Don't think you're wasting their time because most of them want to hear your story and why you advocate. Great, yes, and you're, you're right. Congress people are just people too, right? And they have stories just like we heard from Senator Whitehouse. So um, do you have any final advice for everyone um, before they, they call their members tomorrow? Um, don't be nervous. Um, don't really think that you're bothering them during the day because they will, they're always busy. So don't think you're making them feel busier than normal. <laughs> Good advice. I like that. I like that, Logan. They always have time for their constituents. That's the bottom line. So. Thank you, Logan, for being such a champion for PanCan, um, for coming every year to Washington, D.C., um, and I look forward to hopefully seeing you again very soon. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So I want to thank, you know, all of our terrific panelists, Senator Whitehouse, Dr. Mitra, Allison Story, Angie, and Logan. Um, and now I really want to open it up. I don't know if people have questions, but you can click on the three dots at the bottom of your screen and then click on the Q&A and you can submit questions. I think Dr. Mitra is still with us. If you have any questions for him or for Angie or Logan or for me, um, we'd be happy um, to take your questions. And maybe while we're waiting for, for people to, um, I don't see any questions coming in. Maybe we covered it all. We are, we are so clear that everyone knows exactly what to do. Um, give it another minute. All right, well, send, send any questions in. I'm going to go through sort of our reminders for next week, and, um, and then we can come back if there's any other questions. So, you know, thank you again, everyone, for joining us today. If you would like to share this presentation with your friends and family or anyone who could not attend, it will be, be available on our website this week. So we'd love for you to share this and get other people involved. So once again, up on the screen, here's a reminder of all the things we need you to do this week. Um, and you can visit our website, which has all of this information also. So tomorrow, again, is National Call Congress Day. You need to call your members. Tell them your story. It won't take very long, and it does really have a big impact. And you'll have an email um, in your inbox tomorrow telling you exactly what to do. On Wednesday, we want you to send an email message to, to your member of Congress. And so again, you'll have an email from us um, telling you um, how to send that email to your member of Congress. On Thursday, we want to light up social media um, all about our app. We want you to tweet your member of Congress, um, and that information will also be on our website, exactly how to do that. And then Friday, we're going to reach out um, with a wrap-up of the week. Um, we hope that we have big, bold numbers to tell you about how many people called Congress and how many emails were sent and how many different tweets and, and messages are on social media. So it looks like maybe we've got a couple of questions coming in here. Um, let's see. So 
So there is a question about um, why somebody's representative might not have signed on to a dear colleague letter. So we had a dear colleague letter um, that um, went around regarding the um, the DOD program, the, the Pancreatic Cancer Research Program at the Department of Defense. It's not actually a bill. The way that, that you get a, a program is through these dear colleague letters that go around to members of Congress and people sign on to them. And then the more signatures you have, that helps the appropriate committee say, look, we've got a lot of members that are interested in this and are, are supportive of this. So there's lots of reasons why a member might not sign on. Um, some members are um, less supportive of directing um, how research dollars are being spent. So they might be less willing to say specifically doing something for pancreatic cancer. Many times with the, the um, uh, Dear Colleague letters, members, if they sit on the committee that is going to make the decision about the program, they won't sign on to a letter that's basically coming into them because it's coming into their committee. So a lot of times, members, that's the reason why someone might not, not sign on. And you should certainly go back to your member of Congress and ask them, you know, why didn't you sign on? What more information can I provide to you um, to show you that this is, you know, important and why this is necessary? So while Advocacy Week is an important time to remind Congress about the need to fund pancreatic cancer research, we certainly hope that you will join our movement all year long. You can do that in many different ways. Um, here is a map of all of our affiliates. We have 60 volunteer affiliates around the country. Angie, as an example, is very involved in our San Diego affiliate. Um, and we would, we would love you to join our affiliate or join a Purple Stride event. Um, we've got lots of events still happening in the month of June. Um, and then they'll start up again. Our busy time for Purple Stride events is in the fall season and in the spring season. And you can go on our website to find out when the Purple Stride event is happening in your community. I also want to make sure that you know about our patient services for any patients or families that need information or resources about pancreatic cancer. This is an amazing resource. You can call and speak with one of our trained case managers and get information about specialists, about clinical trials, about, you know, diet and nutrition, really anything that you can think of that someone may be looking for information about the disease, um, our call center can help. And so I encourage you to make sure that your family, friends, and anyone that you know that's, that, that's touched by this disease is aware of our call center. And then finally, of course, we can't do all of this work without our generous supporters, and we're very grateful to you. And so one thing you could think about doing right now is becoming consider becoming a monthly donor. This is an easy way to have a significant impact, um, and you can go to our website to, to sign on to become a monthly donor. I also just want to take a moment to thank our sponsor, Bristol Myers Squibb, for their support of Advocacy Week. Again, we can't do this important work without our sponsors and our supporters. So thank you, everyone, for your energy and your passion for the cause. Thank you to our advocacy leaders out there. I know a lot of you are on the phone call today and our volunteers who are leading the charge in your communities. I absolutely have no doubt that we can still be just as effective virtually calling our members tomorrow, getting on social media, sending emails as we can be in person. And so thank you for participating this week. Let's make it the best ever. Let's show that, you know, when we, when, um, when we raise our hands and say we need you to help, that everybody um, stands up and gets involved um, and that our, our Congress is going to know that the pancreatic cancer advocates are strong and spirited and passionate this week because I have no doubt they're going to hear from all of you. So thank you for everything that you do for PanCan. I hope this was helpful in helping you to understand about why advocacy is so important. And as Dr. Meister said, advocacy works. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you, and I look forward to seeing you all again soon.